to God. So I'm going to introduce one of my brother that I just recently met this year. Amen. This has been divine connection for me. Amen. I met this brother just through um, uh, Pastor Roberts. Amen. From London. Send him the flyer the other time and the Lord was speaking to him and then he called me. We started talking. You know, like, I don't know if you've had a conversation with someone and you felt like you've known this person for years. That's how it felt for me and him. We just flowed, we connected, and he was just like, I just knew that, okay, you have to come and speak, amen, at this conference, amen. And we, we, we you know, we've been sharing experiences and things like that ever since we, we were connected uh, by God, I would say, uh, who, who used uh, a lot of people and the flyer and, you know, whatever. But, you know, I just want us to open our hearts today and just hear what God is saying through our brother, Gary. Amen. So let's, let's put our hands together for Gary. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Luke. Amen. I just want to thank uh, Pastor Fabian for having me and uh, Pastor Luke for having me. And uh, just let me get prepared here. Praise the Lord. But, uh, yeah, I send greetings from my Pastor Chris in... Uh, Cheadle New Life Church, that's where I'm from, living in Cheadle in Stoke-on-Trent. And uh, yeah, like Pastor Luke said, man, we, well, let, me just, let me just start by saying, I've been with my girlfriend now for like, wow, it's got to be about 11 months, getting on for a year th this year. And you know when you need to have confirmation that this is the woman, the God that you're supposed to be with? And there we were praying one night, pressing into the presence of God. And as we were praying, the presence of God came in the room. And I looked at my girlfriend, she looked at me, and we said, Jesus is here. And in that moment, I said, speak, God, speak. And the words that came forth was, I have forged you through the fire separately. And now I'm forging you through the fire together to be like a sword in my hand, that whatever this sword hits, it will break. And whatever tries to hit this sword it shall not break and previous to that in the year I'd been praying about a conference God put it on my heart and said pray about a conference pray about a conference and so I'd been praying about a conference and I'd been looking at calendars and been looking at dates and been looking at different things but nothing clicked and I saw I waited and I waited and I waited and two days after the Lord had spoken to me and my soon-to-be wife amen <laughs> Pastor Robert sent me a picture of the conference flyer and on there was the word forged and I nearly leapt off my bed I said Lord I know I need to be here <laughs> little did I know I was going to be speaking here I didn't know that God had a different plan I just thought I was coming to show up at a conference but uh, I connected with Pastor Luke and uh, yeah it went from there so as soon as he let me know I was speaking I've just been seeking the face of God seeking the face of the Lord and really asking God what do you want to say at this conference what do you want to say so here we go this is what God wants to say open up your Bibles to first John we're going to have a look at a portion of scripture that is loaded amen I want to share something that God has put on my heart if we can catch this today if we can settle this in our hearts then our destinies hmm we can get there in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is what it says. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Them three words, God is love. It's loaded. If we can catch the revelation of God being love, it will take us to another level. It's four from seven. I'm going to read through to nine as well. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And I've been meditating a lot this week about Christ being the manifestation of God's love. The manifestation of God's love. And it's powerful because when I think about the Forge Conference, and I think about what we're called to do, it's all about love. It's all about love. 
And I could preach on that till the cows come home. If we could just, if I could stay on that one topic for the rest of the conference, it's all about love. You see, the scientists in the world are saying, what is the meaning of life? We're trying to figure it out. The scientists are saying, what's life all about? They don't know it's about love. They don't know it's about love. They don't know the meaning of life is love. The very reason we were created is to love. That the God that created us is love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm. So this is what is going to help us in this season of being forged. Because if you don't know that God loves you, if you don't know the Christ that has been placed inside of you is the package that you need to get to the destiny that God has called you to, it's not anything outside of you. It's in you. The very thing you need to get to the destiny that God is calling you to has been placed inside of you. If we can tap into the love of God, you know, I do a little, a little illustration about how some people carry Christ like a Christmas present. They receive the gift and they walk around with the gift. I've got Christ, brother. I've got Christ. But they never open it. They never open it up. They never dig into it to see what it's about, what Christ is about. If they would dig into it, if they would look into it, that everything they need is packaged in Christ. If they would just unpack it, if they would just unpack it. Praise the Lord. I should have a little table here with some water, but I don't. But praise the Lord, I'll be all right. Hallelujah. God is love. Thank you, man of God. Appreciate that. All right, praise the Lord. God is love. We're here to follow God. We're here to serve God. But what stops people today from moving forward in God is because they don't know God is love. Maybe they don't even know what love is. Like myself, I come from a background, uh, uh, excuse me, I'll just take some water, a background of not really having uh, the love of a father. Sam, can you open that for me, please? Thank you. Not really having the love of a father. I was adopted as a child, six months old. Thank you. Get a dry mouth preaching up here. Isn't it? <laughs> Growing up without the love of a father, not being able to understand what love really is. And then even my natural father, he never showed love to me because he was given up by his father and he never had his father's love. So I've walked with the Lord 17, 18 years, coming up to 18 years. I was saved at the age of 19 on my way to commit suicide. I'd been in a place of gangs, crime, drugs, you name it, in and out of madness. But it was at the age of 19 that I, I cried out to God on my way to commit suicide. When a voice came into my mind and pricked my conscience and spoke and said, if you take your life, will you go to heaven or will you go to hell? And that was the, the, the thought that pricked my conscience as I'd thought about suicide, thought there's no way out. I tried every other up, up, uh, avenue. My parents couldn't help me. The doctors couldn't help me. The psychiatrists couldn't help me. The jail system couldn't help me. And so when that thought came to my mind, I went to the nearest place where I thought God was, which happened to be a cathedral in Manchester, which just so happens to be the very place I'm going to propose to my girlfriend in a few days' time, amen, where it all began, where it all began, where the call of God upon my life came into my life. Come on, somebody. Yeah? Praise the Lord. And I said all that to say this because walking with the Lord, you need to know how much he loves you. I mean, I, I, like many of us here, we've been some, through some trials, we've been through some tribulations, we've been through some tests. But if it wasn't for me knowing that God loved me, if it wasn't for me knowing that God's got a plan for my life, if it wasn't for me knowing that even with all my mess, all my mayhem, he's still able to turn it around for a message, praise the Lord. You see, there's a deception going around in the kingdom of the kingdom today and I want to expose it amen there is a lie going around in the kingdom today that says that spiritual maturity or spirituality comes from gifts and anointing but I'm here to let you know now that is not the way to spiritual maturity the way to spiritual maturity is by being forged in the fire come on somebody being forged in the fire so that God can change something on the inside and turn your life around so that the love of God can shine through your life change people's lives because this world this world needs love 
This world is looking for love in all the wrong places. I mean, just yesterday, the terrorist attack in London, because there's no love. If they knew what love was, if they knew who love was, come on somebody. But it's our job, our calling, our mandate to show them the love of God. Uh, but it doesn't come easy. Hello, somebody. We have to be able to be disciplined. Now, when we talk about discipline, that's the forging. That's the forging that changes us. But nobody likes discipline. Oh, don't say that word. It's a curse word. <laughs> Come on now. Listen, when I was young in the Lord, they made me write this out 3,000 times. This scripture I'm about to give you. <laughs> It says uh, in Hebrews 12, 11, it says, Now chastening seems to be joyful, uh, seems not to be joyful for the, uh, sorry. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Amen. We've got to be trained in the discipline of God. But listen, the title of my message today is, Are You Forged or Are You a Forgery? Are you forged or are you a forgery? Come on, somebody. There's so many forgeries today out there preaching on the pulpit. They think because they've got a spiritual gift, because they've got an anointing, that they are forged. But I'm here to let you know they're a forgery. Come on, if it isn't grounded in love, if it isn't founded in love, if it isn't built in love... It's a forgery. Come on, somebody. But I don't know about you, but I'm called to be forged. You're called to be forged. We're called to be forged. And this is the time. Come on. We were born for such a time as this. So that the power of God, the love of God. Come on. The very power of God. Let me, t let me say this. The very power of God is love. Did you know that? That the very power of God is love. It's the greatest power in the universe. They want to think that money is power. Uh-uh. That titles are power. Uh-uh. That wealth is power. Mm-mm. Love is the greatest power in the universe. What did Paul say? Let's be reminded by Apostle Paul. What did he say? Come on. Corinthians. First Corinthians. You've heard it before. 13. Reading down. Hallelujah. Let me find it. I got it here. Yes. Though I speak with the tongues of men. Uh-uh and of angels but have not love i have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal and though i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though i have all faith so that i could remove mountains but have not love i am nothing and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burned but have not love it profits me nothing nothing it doesn't matter what title you got, what gifting you got, what money you got. You ain't got love. Mm, nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so what is love? This is how you know if you've got love. This is how you can test yourself against the measurement of love. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Are we patient? Have we got patience? Have we got kindness? Love does not envy. Uh-oh. Are we looking at other people, their titles and their statuses, envying after what they've got? Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Look what I got. Look what I can do. Does not behave rudely. Mm. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. You see, it blows my mind that the children of Israel, after being delivered from Egypt, going through the wilderness, seeing the miraculous power of God in the Red Sea, crossing through the Red Sea, being fed manna from heaven, and even quails, can then go on, even experiencing the mountain that Moses climbed up and the trembling of God can then turn their back so quickly to worship a golden calf. You see, because we've got to be reminded of the love of God, we have to be reminded daily, daily, daily. The world we live in is trying to captivate our hearts. 
Everywhere we look, he's trying to steal our gaze, steal our hearts. Look at me, follow me, watch me. But if we set our hearts on Christ, if we set our gaze upon the Lord, if we set our face like flint towards the things of God, then these things around us will not be able to shake us, will not be able to disturb us, will not be able to take us off track. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mm. See, it's that God first loved us. Not that we first loved God, but that he first loved us. When did he first love us? Do you know the answer? Come on. He first loved us even before the foundation of the world. The Lamb of God was slain. So even before he created us, he already prepared the amount of love, the things that we'd need even before we were created. I don't know about you, that's so encouraging to me. To know that he's already gone ahead of me. He's already prepared everything I need. If I just walk in it, if I just walk in it, knowing God has got me, God is with me. He's gone before me. He's for me. Because let's have it right, the devil's a slippery devil. He's a slippery, he's, <laughs> he doesn't even, even earn a right for me to speak about him. Because it's love. It's about love. That power the enemy can't overthrow. Yeah, he couldn't overthrow the love of God. He couldn't have overthrow Jesus on the cross because he poured out his love. Praise the Lord. Excuse me while I take a little drink. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory be to God. So I've been meditating on this word all week, man. Whew. And uh, let me say, it's something that I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have God's love, if I didn't know God's love. But listen, I spent the first 10 years of my life without understanding the, the, the love of God. That I would be in and out and up and down and all around because I wasn't rooted and grounded in the love of God. Hallelujah. Mm, excuse me. This is what it says in 1 John 4 and 17. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. That as Christ was in this world, so are we. That's what we're meant to be in this world. Because if we're not like love, if, we, if the love of God is not moving in our lives, then we become a forgery. We're corrupt. And on that day when we say, Lord, Lord, what's he going to say? Is he going to say, come in my good and faithful servant? Or is he going to say, mm -mm, depart from me, I never knew you. You wasn't walking in love. You didn't put, make love the foundation of your life. You didn't build on love. This is key for us to understand. So going back to what I said earlier about the deception that's going around, that people think that they can build ministries and build this and build that without building it in love, thinking that because they've got a gift in. See, gifts can be like the gift on a Christmas tree. It doesn't take too long. But fruit takes time. Fruit takes time. And that's the reason we're being disciplined. That's the reason we're being forced. That's the reason that the fire of God is coming into our life, to build us to, so we can build the fruit. Hallelujah, so the fruit of the Spirit can be evident in our lives. What did Jesus say? You will know them by their fruit. Hallelujah, glory be to God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Excuse me while I just get excited. Amen. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, obey my commandments. You see, when you love God, you listen to instruction and obey the, and follow the voice of the Lord. That's the key. That's the key. That if you're going to walk in love, if you're going to follow the Lord, you have to listen and obey his commandments. That's how you love the Lord. Praise the Lord. We know what the fruit of the Spirit is. fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we don't have these things in our life, then the fire of God has to come into our life to transform us so that the fruit of God will be made manifest but notice how it says one love well sorry it says one uh, sorry it says the fruit of the spirit is love notice it says fruits and not fruits so it's one fruit where everything comes from love from love comes peace come from love comes joy from love comes faithfulness goodness kindness self-control hallelujah <laughs> wow praise the Lord so 
we have to be careful now because this life that we're living, if we're not showing forth the love of God, then the judgment of God comes upon our lives. And we're here to escape the judgment of God by walking in the grace of God. So the love of God can, can, can show forth to the world. And I don't really know what else to say other than I'm so grateful to God for his love because, man, some of us have been broken down and broken down to nothing and broken to the point where you've got nowhere else to turn. You're so alone without God. But God's love comes into your life and transforms you and changes you. <laughs> I apologize. My notes are all over the place, but you know what? The Holy Spirit will take control. Amen. Whew. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. See, love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his love. We love each other because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God but hates his fellow believer, that person is a liar. If we don't love people that we see, how can we love God that we don't see? And he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their fellow believers. Praise the Lord. So this is what I'm trying to bring to the table today about love. That if Christ is in you, all that you need for this world is inside of you. It's been placed on the inside of you. So we've got to open it up. We've got to be able to dig deep into it. We've got to allow it to guide us into the place where God has called us to be. And uh, yeah, praise the Lord. There's so much more I wanted to bring, but I don't want to take up time because I know we've run a little bit over today. So I want to leave you with that, that I hope something that I've said has blessed you, that you can hold on to it. Because without the love of God, we're not going to get to the place where God has called us to be. So I just want to thank you, Pastor uh, Luke and Pastor Fabian, for having me. And Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, I just pray right now, Lord, that, Lord, you would bless your people, Lord, that this word that's gone out, Father, it would be planted and rooted in your people, that the water of God would water the word, Father God, and it would grow and bear much fruit for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.